Good evening and welcome to Wisdom Talk. I'm Dr. Todd Williams, joining you tonight with my lovely wife, April Williams. Hello, good evening to you all. So glad to see you this evening. And we are standing in for Dr. Paul Kreitz tonight, who is not able to be with us. So we are glad you are here. I'll give just a couple of moments for people to come on. And we hope you've had a wonderful Sunday afternoon and wonderful Sunday. So as you come on, can you drop in the chat stream for us uh, where you're watching from? Let us know. Uh, we've got a wonderful subject to you tonight for you tonight. I'm going to be talking to you about eight success habits of spiritual sons and daughters. There's Jeff Patzer. He's hey, Jeff. with us. What's up? Glad to see you, Jeff. It's been a great day, April. Yeah, we have had a good day. Great lunch. Great uh, meeting for our household of faith here in Lancaster with Beyond Church. Northeast Florida. Yes, indeed. We love Florida, don't we? Yes. St. Augustine is the best. <laughs> we love St. Augustine. Mm -hmm. It's been kind of cool here today, but um, sunny. So I'm really thankful for the sun. Yes. Yes, it was. Uh, they were calling for snow, but that kind of. Mm -hmm. South Carolina. Us. It ain't going to snow. Hey, Marilyn, good hey, to Marilyn. see you tonight. Good to see you, Miss Marilyn. Yeah, it rarely snows in South Carolina, and I'm glad. I don't like snow at all. I don't like cold weather. I wasn't made for cold weather. <laughs> Neither was I made for extremely hot weather. I like it just right. But glad you could be with us tonight. Get your Bible, get something to take some notes, get you a, a pad and a pencil to jot down a few things. I'm going to be talking with you about eight success habits of spiritual sons and daughters. We're going to begin tonight from Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 2. Uh, and I'm going to be reading with you Luke 2 and verse 52 tonight. All right. So I'll give just a couple of more moments uh, for you to come on. I hope you all have been praying for Dr. Kreitz uh, as he has been going through this challenge and transition of life. And we are believing God for his complete, total, and restoration of both health and strength. And we believe that that is going to come to full fruition very soon. Right, April? Amen. Amen. We believe in, we're believing. Standing in faith. Yes, indeed. So I want to talk to you about those success habits um, and finding favor with God and man. I talked about this some with our household of faith today. And I thought I would come on and share this with you tonight. So I've got eight things that you can write down. What have I got down as number one, April? Number one is honor. Number one is honor. This is success habit number one that has to be developed in the life of any spiritual son or spiritual daughter is learning how to honor. If somebody could drop that in the chat stream for me. Number one is honor. So I'm talking to you tonight from the book of Luke, uh, chapter 2, verse 52. The Bible says that Jesus increased. That's right. Jesus increased. What did he increase in? The Bible says that he increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with both God and man. What do you think about that, April? That Jesus increased. Increased in stature, mm -hmm. wisdom, wisdom, and favor. favor. And we talk. People talk a lot about favor. Mm -hmm. They talk a lot about want to be have favor. They want to have favor with God, favor mm -hmm. with man. But sometimes they don't realize what happens before the favor, mm -hmm. before this time of favor. Yes. So you know, you said number one was honor, mm -hmm. and I think that's such a. This is so pertinent. This is so important. Because in, especially in our society and other societies, you have a sense of what it means to honor. Mm -hmm. You yes. know, I've heard preachers say when they go to India or when they go to Africa, they receive a, a welcome of honor. Mm -hmm. In other countries, the young people really honor their elders. Yeah. But you don't see it as much in other societies. And I think the church has lost mm -hmm. this teaching, this principle, even the know-how to honor. Yes, yes. This is the first command that God gives uh, in the Old Testament that has a promise attached to it. We read it this morning from Exodus 20 and verse 12. Where the Bible says that we are to honor our father and mother, mm -hmm. that our days 
may be long upon the earth and that it may go well with us. So Jesus reminds us even in the New Testament that this was the first promise uh, that, excuse me, the first commandment that has a promise attached to it. That when we learn to honor, then it will cause an increase in our life. And we can see from Acts, excuse me, uh, Luke 2, 52, that right before this, Jesus, he was about 12 years old, entered into the temple uh, and stayed there for three days. And his parents had lost track of him, found him at the temple, and he was reasoning with the teachers there uh, and actually teaching them. They were all astonished and amazed at his knowledge. And uh, the Joseph and Mary wanted him to uh, come with them, of course. And he said, did not you know that I would be about my father's business and be in my father's house? So we can see immediately that Jesus is acknowledging God as his father. And even though God was his father, yet he submitted and honored the words of Joseph and Mary. And he went home with them from that point. And that's when it says that Jesus increased. He increased. Right on the heels of honor always comes an increase. Um, my spiritual father taught me that whatever I value is what I will honor. Whatever I value is what I will honor. Uh, I also, my spiritual father taught me never allow anyone to dishonor someone who is a spiritual father, uh, a spiritual leader, even a mentor to you, to never let anyone dishonor that person in your presence. Anything you'd like to add to that, April? No, I think it's so, sometimes people are really flippant what mm -hmm. they say about other spiritual leaders or other people. Mm -hmm. Be really careful what you say. Yeah. And we have to really guard our mouths. Yes. And I can say that I don't necessarily agree with a certain principle that someone's teaching, but I'm really careful to just label that person as this or that. Oh, yeah. I think we have to be really careful with our words mm -hmm. because we're very quick to dishonor, Yeah. but not as quick to honor. Mm -hmm. And honor is very, very important. That it will be well, that it will go well with you. Yeah. That's important. Some people, it's not going well with them, mm -hmm. and they do not connect the dots that there is an area of dishonor in yeah. their lives. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people, you know, they have great expectations even out of spiritual leaders. Um, you know, Paul the Apostle, who uh, is credited with writing on approximately 13 books of the New Testament, uh, there were times when Paul was wrong. Uh, his estimations of John Mark uh, were premature and wrong. Uh, and we know that Mark eventually wrote the book of Mark. Uh, he became a spiritual son of Peter. Peter tells us that Marcus is his son and the Lord. And then later, Paul has retracts his opinion about Paul, about, excuse me, about Mark, and says, bring him uh, with you because Marcus is profitable to the gospel. Um, that, that moment caused a great division between Paul and Barnabas. Uh, just, so just because someone is a man of God and can be an apostle of God, uh, he can be wrong about certain situations. And that's an example to us from the New Testament. But it, you know, just because he was wrong does not mean uh, that he did not deserve honor uh, of who he was in the Lord. Number two tonight. What, what have I got for number two, April? Number two is order. 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 So I'm talking to you about eight success habits of any spiritual son. If we're going to grow in uh, wisdom, stature, and favor with God and man, then I'm giving you eight uh, habits to develop in your life that you can increase with both God and man in wisdom, stature, and favor. So order is my number two success habit. Uh, order is simply a proper alignment, um, an arrangement, how I arrange not only my day, but how I arrange uh, the order of relationships. Uh, under this, I would also consider respect. 
you know, it is always in order to be respectful. Respect is vastly different than honor. Uh, honor is what I value and respect is an attitude that I carry. Any thoughts on that, April? Yeah, respect is your attitude, honor is your action. Mm, great. Respect is your attitude, honor is your action. Excellent, excellent. I'm going to drop that in the chat stream. Honor is uh, my action and respect is my attitude. Great word, April. Number three, what have I got for number three tonight? Obedience. Obedience. The, the O word, obedience. <laughs> so number one was honor. We don't like talking about obedience too much, do we? Oh, yes, of course I do. I like talking about it. <laughs> honor was number one. And number two was order. order. And number three is obedience. So I can put that in the chat stream as well. Obedience. Obedience is what I define is where I receive my reward. This is where I can expect to be uh, rewarded by the Lord. The Bible tells us that, uh, that we must believe that God is and that he is the rewarder of those who mm -hmm. diligently seek him. So I must know that whenever I am obedient to the word of God, there will always be a reward on the other side of obedience mm -hmm. as well. And we can see this with Jesus. Even though Jesus is the son of God, he said, I'm in my father's house uh, being about my father's business, yet he still obeyed Joseph and Mary. What a God. I mean, Jesus is God in the flesh, but yet submits to uh, his natural parents there. Any thoughts on that tonight, April? And, and he also said, you know, whatever the Father tells me, I do. Yes. So sometimes we want to think about um, doing great things for God. And, and I hear people say, well, I, I'm, I don't obey any man. I just obey God. Oh, wow. Well, many times the instructions come through a person. Mm -hmm. The instructions that you need to receive comes through a person. And I've experienced this with Dr. Paul Kreitz, who's mm -hmm. a mentor to me. A lot of times we say spiritual father and people get kind of, they don't understand that spiritual father, mentor, uh, whatever. But, um, I had it in my heart to do daily dose every day. I felt mm -hmm. like God was pulling me that way, but I had what I call, and he laughed when I said it, it's kind of like a failure to launch. Yeah. And so when I was talking to him, I, I, I had everything written out and I, I read it to him <laughs> and I told him my, my ideas and he said, okay, I want you to do it. I want you to do it during the week, and I want you to start Monday. Mm -hmm. And I said, Monday? What? And he said, no, start Monday. And um, if I, if he truly is a mentor and a spiritual father to me, mm -hmm. and I recognize him as that, then I need to listen to what he's saying. Right. So I, I said, okay. And, and it, from there it went. But if I would not have been obedient, I think that there may have been the, the tendency to kind of drag my feet. Mm -hmm. So that was his instruction was the impetus to get me going, yeah. that force, that push. And we all kind of, sometimes we all kind of like to think that we're these, these free range chickens that can kind of do whatever they want. But f through whom does God give us an instruction? And many times it's the man of God. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be willing to be obedient. Yes, absolutely. To be obedient. Absolutely. Uh, an instruction comes... And the only thing that is required is obedience. You know, my spiritual father taught me this. He said, faith is not needed uh, where obedience has been harnessed. You know, um, and I said, explain this to me. He said, Adam didn't need faith. He simply had to be obedient to God in the garden. So obedience is my number three. What's, what have I got for number four tonight, April? Accountability. Accountability. This is a place where I have had to learn to open myself to receive both correction uh, and inspection. Correction and inspection. Now, I'm not accountable to just anyone. Uh, the Bible in the New Testament is very explicit to us about having people over us in the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I talk about spiritual fathering a lot because I have a spiritual father. Um, and the reason I'm saying that you may have a pastor, you may have someone that you look to uh, for oversight uh, in your spiritual walk in life. Um, for me, you know, you know, some people may have a bishop. 
Uh, you know, I've been in the ministry for over 25 years and uh, I came to a place where I didn't know a lot of people who had been where I had been or done what I had done or experienced what I had experienced. Uh, and it was going to take someone who had been through a lot of things. Um, and when I met Dr. Kreitz, you know, he had asked me, he said, Todd, what do you want out of a relationship with me? And the first thing that I told him, I said, I'm looking for someone to be accountable to. Uh, this is how I have set my life up. I must have someone who can tell me when I'm wrong. I don't take correction from just anybody um, because not just every, everybody loves you. Not everybody has your best intention uh, in heart. And this is why I talk a lot about fathering. Um, you know, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 6, 1 and 2, he says uh, that we are to obey our father and mother in the Lord. Um, I want to be accountable. Uh, I need someone to tell me no, uh, someone to tell me when I'm wrong. You know, that's what a spiritual father is. He's a person that you have given permission to tell you no. Uh, you know, corrections. Uh, correction is proof of love to me. Um, you know, God uh, says, as many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. You know, we're, we are not sons that are without discipline, or Hebrew says if we're a son without discipline, then we're a bastard. Uh, any thoughts on that tonight, April? Well, I know that a lot of pastors and fathers in the Lord feel the pain of mm -hmm. having group uh, congregants or, or sons or daughters in the Lord who will come to them with problems and issues, but never do what they say, never listen to anything. There are so many people in the church who want to use their pastor, at, kind of like a father, to, to come and kind of, uh, or a counseling session to mm -hmm. dump all their problems on, but when he tells them what they need to do or tells them, an instruction they don't do it and so they it keeps you in when you do not have a father when you have no one to speak into your life or a spiritual mother sometimes yeah. there are women that that and I have people that come to me and ask me things mm -hmm. but when you don't have that in your life when you don't have someone that you can go to that you're listening to you stay in your cycle of dysfunction yeah. you stay in a cycle of dysfunction mm -hmm. when all you want to all you want to do is dump your problems and dump your crisis on somebody but you don't ever listen to the wisdom and instruction mm -hmm. of someone else you stay in a perpetual cycle of instruction uh, dis dysfunction that's why it's so important to have someone in your mm -hmm. life yeah. Who to whom you will listen, to whom you will take wisdom, and you do have to choose very carefully. Oh yeah. The person that you you know, but everyone needs that. If you're a pastor, then pastors need a pastor, or pastors need a father. Absolutely. But pastors need someone to whom to be accountable. We all need it, and mm -hmm. it takes a humble spirit to say, you know what, I need an instruction. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's something uh, you know. I have pastored church. Uh, churches for over 18 years uh, and I realized that many in many of those settings you know you can have an elder board uh, even a deacon a board of deacons however that church is structured and many of those people on that board they've never pastored a church uh, you know they typically they may be spiritual people but they've never stood in that position um, and from a perspective of knowing what to do, um, you're automatically, you know, if you're just uh, one voting member on the elder board as the pastor of the church, you already are at an advantage because you know more than they do because they've never pastored a church. Um, now, they may have been in leadership, but the experience part of it is vastly different. So the reason that I'm saying this to you is because uh, if you realize that you are the smartest one at the table, uh, you know, I don't want to be the smartest one at the table in many settings. My spiritual father told me, if you're the smartest one at the table, then you need to find a new table. Uh, you know, you've got to have someone who's been where you've been, uh, who's done what you've done, uh, and has experienced what you experience, and even beyond that. 
You know, when I'm, you know, I didn't go out looking for a spiritual father. I went seeking God for order. And then God pointed me to a spiritual father. And my, my first encounter with him in this arena was in the discussion of accountability. I'm looking for someone to be accountable to, someone that I can personally answer to. So that's my number four uh, success habit. Jeff said he's finding a different table. <laughs> Go ahead, Jeff. Table. Let's stop and greet. Um, Dr. Angel Kreitz is watching tonight. We honor you tonight. Yes, It's indeed. so good to see you. Appreciate your wisdom. Appreciate your faithfulness. Appreciate your faith and your walk with God. You have meant so much to our life. We mm -hmm. love you and Dr. Paul Kreitz. Amen. Let's see who else is with us tonight. Let me scroll back. Let me scroll back up. I haven't been reading the comments as much. I see Mrs. Rollins with us. Brad, good to see you. Chris, good to see Chris you. Chris Luck, what's up, man? Tom, I thought I saw Jeff and Susan. Pastor Hatcher was on too. Okay, good to see you all tonight. Good to number see five, you. what's number five, April? Number five is submission. Submission. Oh, this is one uh, Apostle Arlen was uh, speaking on last week at Purpose Life Church, and I told him, I said, you know this is one of the Christian dirty words, right? There's three Christian dirty words. That's correction, uh, submission, and discipline. <laughs> Here we go. Number five, submission. Uh, this is where I receive both rebuke, reproof, correction, and blessing. That's right. I said reproof, rebuke, correction, and blessing. The Bible tells us that the word of God is given uh, to us for reproof, rebuke, and correction. And in the arena of submission, I not only receive accountability, but I have placed myself in submission to someone over me in the Lord. Now, the Bible tells us, I'm going to find a verse of scripture right quick uh, from Hebrews 13, and verse 17, most all of these I'm reading to you from the Amplified Version tonight. Hebrews 13 and verse 17, stay with me. I'm giving you eight success habits for becoming a spiritual son. The Bible tells us that we're not just uh, saved sinners, saved by grace, but that we've been called into an inheritance as the sons of God. That's what the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, that all of creation is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Not just the son of God, but for us as the son, sons of God, those who become the recipients of the salvation that is in Christ Jesus. The Bible tells us in Hebrews also that Jesus became the captain of their salvation, that he might bring many sons into the kingdom of God. So Hebrews 13 and 17 from the Amplified says, obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them, continually recognizing their authority over you, for they are constantly keeping watch over your souls and guarding your spiritual welfare as men who will have to render an account of their trust. Do your part to let them do this with gladness and not with sighing and groaning for that would not be profitable for you either. Any thoughts on submission tonight, April? No, I have no thoughts on submission. <laughs> no, no thoughts on submission. <laughs> we like the blessing part, but we don't always like the submission part. It's not always easy to uh, receive a rebuke or even a reproof or a correction. Uh, but I have learned that a correction can change your direction. Uh, you know, my spiritual father has had to interject into my life many times. I, I knew many times what I would teach on Sunday morning that he was going to watch. And I could pretty much expect on Sunday afternoon or possibly Monday that I was going to get a call, you know, because I was under inspection. Uh, he was inspecting me, uh, what I was teaching, what I'm saying, uh, you know, that keeps you in line because you're not just, you know, running amok or, 
you know, <laughs> running around like a, a little Christian rogue and just saying whatever you want to say, he would ask me questions like, why, why did you say that? Why did you teach that? Did you not think that point through? Um, so, you know, being a grown man who's uh, experienced in ministry, it takes a degree of humility uh, to humble yourself in submission and receive from someone. There's something that I learned very quick about this is you have to receive correction. Somebody can correct you and you not receive it. You have to learn to receive it because you understand that they have uh, your well-being in mind because ultimately they love you. What's number uh, six tonight? Number six is growth. Number six is growth. This is an area that all of us uh, should commit ourselves to. You know, me growing in the Lord, number one, is vastly important. First, uh, excuse, me, excuse me, Colossians 1 and 10 tonight, Amplified Version tells us this. Colossians 1 and 10, that you may walk worthy or walk in a manner worthy, conducting yourselves in a way that is fully pleasing to the Lord and desiring to please him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work and steadily growing and increasing in the knowledge of God. I had to learn that part of my uh, success is developing the habit of growing. How do I grow in the Lord? I've got to get into God's word. Uh, I commit myself to study. I have committed myself not to just read the Bible. I commit myself to study the Bible. You know, the Bible can be treated like a book that's just read. For me, this is a manual for living. This is my instruction manual while on earth. Any thoughts on that before I move on? It's like Dr. Angel says, mm -hmm. read the book. Read the book. Read the book. <laughs> read just the book. read the book. That's yep. what we need to do. So important for growth. Yes. So I also include in growth here, uh, I commit myself to be an aid and to assist and also to build. You know, when uh, when my spiritual father uh, calls us to, to come to Florida, I go. You know, whether uh, he's having a conference uh, or whether he's called me to just to come to his house, uh, I'm going there. I'm going there uh, to assist. I'm going there, you know, I don't ever enter into his house looking for an opportunity to speak, but I never come unprepared. I learned that very early uh, because I've been sitting in a meeting and, you know, he say to me, in the next five minutes, Todd, you're going to be teaching. Uh, so I hope you've got something prepared. You know, you... you but we should always be ready to give account. Oh, yes. that's, what, that's what the Bible says, be ready mm -hmm. to give account. And so we should always be ready. That's your thing. The Bible also says to be ready in season and out of season. So I learned very quickly to be prepared when I go into his house uh, because he can call on me at any moment uh, and I'm not going to be embarrassed and say, oh, I don't have anything. You know, uh, we're supposed to be uh, well-seasoned people and I have to commit myself to, to grow. And uh, I am there as well to assist and to build up the the family of God there. Any other thoughts on that, April? No, just the next one is maturity. Maturity. Number one thing that's lacking, I think, in the church. Number one thing is that, maturity. Mm. This is, you know, I believe it was about two years ago, uh, Dr. Kreitz started teaching on the new season and what is the new season. And he said that this was a season of fathers and sons. And uh, he wrote a book on this called Seasons and Sons. And in this book, he explained that the goal of this new season in Christianity was about maturing sons, fathers, maturing sons, bringing them into maturity. I wrote down here for maturity uh, that it becomes this is my goal. My goal is to become not just a son, but a mature son in the Lord. Maturity being for me to become full, to become stable, uh, and for me to be able to handle myself in a way that's both responsible and pleasing to my father. There is nothing worse 
than a full grown son. And those of you that are parents that understand having a, a, an adult child that is immature. Uh, and I believe that we have watched this within Christianity long enough. You know, we have uh, full grown children or full grown adults uh, that really are still wearing diapers. Um, Making messes. Yeah. We, we have to bring people into maturity. Mm -hmm. Maturity is the goal of this season. If you're coming on tonight and you're listening to me and you're saying, what is this guy talking about? I'm telling you tonight about eight things that I have identified as success habits uh, for any uh, spiritual son or spiritual daughter. Uh, and growing in favor with both God and man. The Bible tells us that Jesus increased in wisdom, stature, and favor with both God and man in Luke uh, 2.52. So maturity was number seven tonight. And maturity means that I become able to handle myself in a way that is both responsible and pleasing unto God my heavenly father, and as well as my spiritual father. There's nothing worse than for the, if I were to get a call from my spiritual father and he'd say, Todd, you, you're just acting like a big baby right here. You know, you, you need to grow up. Uh, that would be one of the worst calls that I could possibly get from someone over me in the Lord. Any thoughts on that tonight, April? Well, well the, main, the main purpose, you know, we're not Christians so that we can go to church and all gather in these closed walls mm -hmm. and have our service and then leave. The purpose of Jesus being in our hearts mm -hmm. is so that we'll multiply. Yes. It's so that we share the good news and so that we show the character of Christ so that we reproduce. But mm -hmm. only maturity yes. allows reproduction. Only maturity allows reproduction. So mm -hmm. Jesus went from 12 yep. to 120 to millions mm -hmm. because his nature was reproduced mm -hmm. in his sons and then in sons and sons. When we say sons, we, we don't, uh, we mean sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. So the, the point of the gospel being spreading is, is through this multiplication, through this maturity. So mm -hmm. where you see many times an inhibition or a thwarting of the multiplication is because there's a, a immaturity. Mm -hmm. It's because people can look at other people's lives yes. and say, I don't want to have anything to do with that because they don't see the nature mm -hmm. of Jesus. And the point is that we look like, we talk like, we have the nature of Christ. Yes. And so that, that we multiply that in others. But there is no multiplication without maturity. Exactly. You know, if, if you're listening to us tonight and you say, I just don't, I'm not sure about all this that uh, they're talking about. Let me, let me assure you that this book that's in my hand, the Bible, Old and New Testament, this entire book is about father and son. You know, Jesus came uh, and emulated to us what a son should be like that is in a complete and full relationship with his father. We, we call God our father. Psalm uh, 68 tells us that God is a father to the fatherless and that he sets the solitary in families. You know, God has chosen to identify himself first and foremost to us as a father. And I believe in this day, we, we really don't understand the, the dynamics of a father and what a father does in our lives. We've become a fatherless society. We've become a fatherless generation. Now, Malachi chapter four, the last two verses of the Old Testament, God said that he was gonna send the prophet Elijah and that his message would be to turn the hearts of fathers to the children and children to their fathers. He said, lest I smite the earth with a curse. So, we have to receive and understand that, you know, in Adam and his identity, when he became lost, when he disobeyed God in the garden, Adam did not just, you know, uh, enter into sin. He entered into a lost reality. And what was lost was his relationship with God as his father. And we know that Christ 
He came to restore that relationship for us. He became to be the bridge between us and God the Father. He becomes the mediator of the new covenant. And that, that mediator is the Son of God. And through Christ, we enter into sonship now. Sonship. Amen? Amen. Let's look at the last one I have tonight. What is that, April? Faithfulness. Faithfulness. You know, faithfulness, I could not say possibly enough about this. You know, uh, we find over and over through the New Testament that God says that when there's a reward coming, he says, uh, enter into the joy of the Lord, you good and faithful servant. What does it mean to be faithful? Uh, for me, as uh, a spiritual son to uh, my spiritual father who is over me in the Lord, it means that I'm there. You know, I'm there. Whatever you're doing, I'm doing. Wherever you're going, I'm going. Whatever you're talking about is what I'm talking about. Um, you know, if if he's having a meeting, I'm there. Uh, if I have to change my schedule, uh, then my schedule has to be changed. Uh, for me to be faithful means that all excuses go out the door. You know, I remember years ago, uh, I understood as a new believer in Christ that there were certain uh, components, April, that it was going to take to keep me in this uh, walk that I had entered into. And one of those things was I was going to have to find the place of being faithful to the Lord. I can remember one time it was snowing and uh, my mother said, are you going to church in this weather? I said, I don't care if I have to crawl to church in this weather, I'm going. There ain't nothing going to stop me uh, from being there. And I got there and there were three people. You know, it was uh, the pastor and myself and I think two other people. So, uh, and, and we worship the Lord. You know, was I being uh, judgmental or critical of anybody else that was not there? No. I just simply knew I'm going to be there no matter what. Any thoughts on that tonight? No, faithfulness is so important. So important to, to for your pastor, for your spiritual father, for, for whatever. And that's one of the main things I think that's missing mm -hmm. is this sense of commitment, this sense of faithfulness. You know, you'll have um, people who think of all kinds of excuses not to go to church. But they don't miss other events. Or they, you know, it's so important. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. We need each other. We need to be together. We need to encourage one another. And the, the purpose of the fivefold ministry is for the equipping of the saints. Well, if we're not coming together, there is no equipping. There's no strengthening. We need to be faithful. Yes. That's something I understood a long time ago. Many times it's not the gifted person. It's not the uh, most talented person. Sometimes it's not the most educated person uh, that winds up getting a promotion in life. Many times it's simply the faithful person. Mm -hmm. uh, if someone were to ask me, you know, Todd, how did you wind up in ministry? Uh, I can tell you just because I kept showing up. And many times I showed up when other people didn't show up. Um, you know, was I looking for this? Was I trying to create a, a career path for myself? No, it was not. I was simply there. And I was there when other people weren't there. And it's that type of person that winds up getting promoted. Uh, was I the most qualified person? No, but I was there. Uh, and that in itself qualified me eventually because as I continued to be faithful, uh, it caused me to grow. Uh, it caused me to mature. Uh, you know, I was honoring the man of God that was in my life. Uh, through that, I was learning order. I was learning obedience. Uh, I learned accountability. You know, so, so many of the underlying principles of what I'm telling you uh, came through faithfulness. You know, I, I can't sit and say, you know, I was, well, I was the smartest guy in the room, so that's why I was picked. No. Uh, you know, I was the wisest one. No, I wasn't. I was there and my, I kept showing up and my face was there every time. You know, uh, there's something about, I've learned no leader can do anything with an unfaithful person. You know, if, if a person's just sporadic and, you know, they're here a little and there a little and they may come in the door and, you know, I learned as a, a pastor, you know, there were people that would say, well, why, why haven't I been made a deacon or 
Why haven't I been made an elder? I'm like, you can't even make it to church. How am I going to put you in a position uh, when you can't even get here half the time? You know, you, if you want to be promoted, if you're looking for God to promote you, if you want to go to the next level, then you're going to have to start with the foundation of faithfulness. You know, uh, Jesus increased in wisdom, stature, and favor with both God and man. And he was never found unfaithful in any situation. That was at the, uh, the base of everything that he emulated to us. So I'm glad you could join us tonight. Any other thoughts on any of this, April? Nope. I think you covered it pretty well. Thank you so much, everybody that, that has joined us. If we didn't get a chance to greet you, mm -hmm. just want to welcome you. So good to see you tonight. Good to see you on Wisdom Talk. It's good to be with you tonight. Absolutely. We're going to get ready to close out this evening. But before we go, I want to remind all of you that have been partners with my spiritual father and his wife, Dr. Angel Kreitz, uh, as many of you know that Dr. Kreitz has had some medical complications that he's been dealing with since November, but he has been improving physically uh, and there has been some dramatic changes that have happened. Um, you know, I don't need to fill you in on all the details of, of what has already transpired, uh, but I want you to continue to pray for him. Uh, continue uh, your support, all of you that have been faithful in supporting uh, the Ministry of Purpose International, I want to thank you uh, as a spiritual son of his. I want to thank you for all of you have, who have been faithful in supporting that ministry. That ministry is, uh, has touched people throughout the world. I believe they said that Dr. Kreitz has spoken to over 2 million people in the world. Uh, you know, if tonight, if, if you haven't uh, sent your monthly partnership with them, then I want to encourage you to do that. You can go uh, to paulkreitz.com. If you scroll down on the home page, you will see a picture of my spiritual father, Dr. Paul Kreitz. You'll see sow a, a sow a seed button. It will take you to a PayPal link and you can sow there. Uh, you can also go to Cash App and his Cash App is dollar sign Dr. Paul Kreitz. Or excuse me. Dollar sign Paul Christ, Dr. Paul Christ. Yeah, That's dollar correct. sign Dr. Paul Christ. Dollar sign Dr. You. Paul Christ. I've got so many dollar sign this and dollar I'm sign. I'm telling you, they're fertile, they're fertile ground too. They are fertile ground to sow into. God has blessed me personally so much Absolutely. from sowing into. The anointing that you sow in is the anointing that you will grow in. Yes. They've meant so much to our lives. And when you sow into, when you're mm -hmm. faithful, God will bless you. So sow a seed of faithfulness tonight. And I promise you, you know, God will bless. Whatever a man sows, that will he reap. Yes, indeed. That is so true, Kathy. We miss him uh, and miss being here. I would rather be on the other side where you all are watching him. Uh, but, you know, as his son and daughter in the Lord, uh, we we want to step up here. You know, we, we receive nothing for what we're doing here. We're not asking for anything. Uh, we just simply want to be a blessing mm -hmm. to someone who has poured so much into our lives. We want we are honored with the opportunity uh, to have you all support him uh, in a way that he has been so supportive to mm -hmm. us. And I know many of you have received, you know, words of wisdom from him, uh, blessing. You know, he he is uh, such a man of grace. Uh, and love and care, um, you know, what What I give, I don't feel like equals to what he has given mm -hmm. uh, to us. So uh, we thank you for your continued support of that ministry. And th there's so many people that uh, their lives have been touched through that. So I want to thank you tonight on this Sunday night. I look forward to being back with you. I'm going to be back with you tomorrow night on Monday night at 8 p.m. for Wisdom Talk. And then I believe April is going to be with you uh, Tuesday. Tuesday night. Uh, and then Apostle Arlen is going to be with you Wednesday and Thursday night of this week. So, so it's going to be a great week of Wisdom Talk. Absolutely. Prime time, 8 p.m. Yes. I'm Sunday on, through Thursday. I'm coming out hitting hard tomorrow night. What, you, do you know what you're talking about yet? Or are you still? I think I'm going to talk about what every Christian needs. Oh, don't miss it. Sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. <laughs> 
And don't forget to join me on every Monday through Thursday morning for Daily Dose mm -hmm. at 9 a.m. Just sharing wisdom that the Lord has given me, imparted to me, and wisdom that's been imparted to me through Dr. Paul Christ. So don't miss that. In the mornings at 9 a.m. I would love to see you there. I'm looking forward to in the morning at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to sign off. I'm going to go in here and find me a sandwich or something to eat. What we got to eat? You want me to make you a sandwich? That'd be great. Okay. I'll make you a sandwich, babe. <laughs> I love my Sunday night sandwich. Yes, yeah, a tradition. <laughs> Sunday night sandwich. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us tonight. We will see. I'll see you back tomorrow night at 8 p.m. for Wisdom Talk. Remember, keep Dr. Kreitz and Angel mm -hmm. Kreitz in prayer as they go through this uh, period of time. And we believe that God is about to do something yes, more than is. we have ever seen before. We thank you tonight and we'll see you we tomorrow you. night. Have a great night. Have bye a great bye. night.